1850 earthquakes, unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks! I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is October the 9th, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from October the 1st through October the 7th. It was on this day in 1995, when a magnitude 8.0 struck Jalisco, Mexico. The shock occurred off of Jalisco, where a tsunami was triggered that affected a 120-mile stretch of the coast. The earthquake could be felt in Mexico City and even in high-rise buildings in Dallas and Houston. At least 49 people died and 100 were injured. The earthquake rupture lasted for about a minute and involved a 124-mile-long break along the plate boundary. The greatest displacement of the fault is about 16.4 feet. The tsunami had a maximum run-up height of 16.7 feet. There were at least two waves recorded. The tsunami was also observed in Ecuador, French Polynesia, Samoan Islands, Australia and Hawaii. This is what's happening. South Florida surveys the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. Hurricane Matthew packed a deadly punch as it slammed into the southeast on Saturday. Two people were killed by falling trees in Georgia as the storm roared up the east coast. By late Saturday, Matthew had killed 10 Americans and left almost 1.6 million people without power. The giant storm brought massive flooding from rains and storm surges as it hit the Carolinas despite being downgraded to a Category 1 hurricane. At its height, Matthew was a raging Category 5 hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour. Earlier last week, Matthew killed nearly 900 people as it ravaged Haiti. Besides the Georgia deaths reported Saturday, the storm killed five people in Florida and three in North Carolina. At one time, meteorologists feared a second storm developing out in the Atlantic Ocean, Hurricane Nicole, would join forces with Matthew, but it is also weakening and is not expected to reach land. About 2 million Americans had been warned to evacuate across the southeast as the storm made its steadily march across the Caribbean. Haiti now has 60,000 people left homeless by the hurricane and has seen outbreaks of cholera. Mysterious UFO filmed in Moscow. A denizen of the Russian capital of Moscow captured an intriguing and incredibly bright object hovering over a group of apartments. The bizarre orb appears to then descend behind the buildings, leaving behind an additional anomaly that remains floating in the air. According to some residents of the city, the sighting on Monday evening was not entirely abnormal and that similar UFOs have been observed in the past. Skeptics, however, suggest that the bright light is merely the spotlight of a helicopter perhaps conducing a nighttime search. As one might suspect, Russian officials would not comment on the mysterious anomaly, leading to the possibility that it was some kind of military operation rather than an alien craft. I would love to know, what are your thoughts on UFOs and related phenomena? You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over the when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1850 earthquakes. This was a 21% decrease when compared to this time last week. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 2,237. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 248 earthquakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.5 which struck Chile. Once again, 
we were presented with an incredibly interesting week. We saw a dramatic decline in earthquake activity across the globe. This coming off the heels of one of the most seismically interesting earthquake swarms in recent history. Surprisingly enough, last week, we did not register any earthquakes within the magnitude 6 realm. That's unusual considering that we have averaged between 2 and 3 each week for over 3 months. We did, however, experienced 20 magnitude 5 plus earthquakes. This was an impressive 43% decrease in registered quakes when compared to the previous week. As you would expect, these earthquakes were centered mostly along the Ring of Fire, with the Philippines, Tonga, and Japan seeing the most activity. The Philippines registered two magnitude 5 plus earthquakes. The average being a 5.3. Two were also experienced in Tonga. The average magnitude being a 5.2. Not to be left out, we have Japan with two. The average of these quakes being a 5.4. We registered 92 magnitude 4 earthquakes. This was a slight decrease when compared to the previous week. Seismic swarms were limited to the usual locations which include Indonesia with 14 earthquakes, New Zealand with 10, and Fiji with 9. The most notable and intense experienced last week struck our friends in Taiwan. This was a 5.8 that struck on Thursday, October the 6th. This 5.8 magnitude earthquake was felt around the island of Taiwan, which forced thousands of people to flee their homes and workplaces. The epicenter of the earthquake occurred at sea, just off Yilin County, with a depth of 10.9 miles. Fortunately, no reports of any serious damage to structures or people have been made. The earthquake caused a power failure in Taipei though, which forced the parliament to stop its session. Fear of earthquakes remains great on the island after the terrible quake last February. If you remember, that hit the southern part of Taiwan. The former island of Formosa lies near the junction of two tectonic plates and is often hit by shocks. In 1999 an earthquake of magnitude 7.6 killed more than 2,300 people in the center of the country. In December 2006, a 6.7 magnitude earthquake caused a shortage in telephone and internet communications throughout Asia. In total, we clocked in 72 magnitude 4 earthquakes last week. The majority of these earthquakes struck along the Ring of Fire. Earthquake swarms were limited to the usual locations which includes Japan with 9, Indonesia with 9 as well, and Chile with 7. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the states. We'll begin with Hawaii, which registered 61 earthquakes. The strongest being a 3.0 which originated from the Kailua-Kona on Sunday, October the 2nd. Swarm activity originated from the volcano and Pahala. Alaska continued to experience slightly elevated earthquake activity last week. In total, 627 were registered with the strongest to strike being a magnitude 5.2 that hit false pass. Washington registered 36. The most intense being a 2.9 that hit Miramont on Sunday, October the 2nd. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington was a 1.1. Oregon's earthquake activity, once again, remained consistent with the previous week's total. We logged 10 last week, with the strongest being a 3.0 in Woodburn. California experienced, yet again, another interesting week. The earthquake advisory ended, following a week of increased seismicity near the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault. The advisory, issued on September 27, came in response to nearly 300 earthquakes in the Brawley seismic zone underneath the Salton Sea. As we learned, this portion of the San Andreas has not experienced a large earthquake since 1690, causing scientists to believe that likelihood of rupture is higher than in other regions. 
While some people may consider advisories like this strange or unusual, they are occasionally released, though with limited publicity. In fact, alerts such as this are issued once or twice a year. Just because the advisory ended, does not mean the risk of an earthquake is as well. Now, the chance of a major earthquake returns to background levels, which, in any given week is 1 in 6,000. While this may seem small, earthquakes can happen at any time, and a southern San Andreas Fault earthquake could cause serious damage to Los Angeles and the surrounding region. Therefore, advisories provide a reminder that we live in earthquake country and that being knowledgeable about the hazards that surround us, and preparing ourselves are some of the most important things we can do. Anyways, last week alone, California experienced 693 earthquakes. This was a 29% decrease when compared to the previous week. The most potent earthquakes experienced in the sunny state were a 3.5 in Kalinga, a 3.4 and a 3.2 in Calipatria, and a 3.1 in Mammoth Lakes. Nevada registered 116 earthquakes last week. The strongest experienced was only a 2.0 that struck Battle Mountain. Idaho registered 11 all week. The most intense to strike was a 1.6 which struck Shally. Montana experienced 44 earthquakes. The most intense registered was 2.1 that struck West Yellowstone. Swarm activity was primarily centered around West Yellowstone which registered 17 earthquakes and Whitehall with 8. Wyoming registered 22 earthquakes last week. The strongest recorded was a 2.3 that hit Old Faithful Geyser. Utah raked in 16. The strongest reported was a 1.9 in Mapleton. Our pals in Arizona experienced one earthquake last week. This being a 1.3 that struck Fredonia. Not to be left out of the equation, Evergreen, Colorado experienced a 2.4. Kansas experienced 4. All of which originated from Caldwell, with the strongest being a 2.6. Oklahoma clocked in 32 earthquakes. The strongest experienced was a 3.5 in Fairview and Pawnee. The new Madrid seismic fault experienced movement as well. This includes three earthquakes that hit Missouri. The strongest being a 2.3 in New Madrid. We should also note that Wrigley, Tennessee experienced movement along the New Madrid seismic zone. This being a 1.2. The North American Craton experienced movement as well. This being a 1.9 that struck Ladson, South Carolina. Finally, our Canadian pals experienced seismic movement as well. 11 earthquakes in total. The most notable being a 3.9 in Mayo. With the earthquake quiet present, I would prepare for increased seismic activity over the next several days. If history repeats itself, we'll see this in the form of earthquake swarms or even more intense earthquakes along the Ring of Fire. Specifically, locations like Indonesia, New Zealand, and South America. And that's it for the Earthquake Report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Feel free to post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star.